Welcome back to the show. Time now for one of our favorite regular segments here on the morning news, Dog Talk with trainer Tristan Flynn from Jolly Tales in Halifax. <laughs> this morning he's got two beautiful puppies with him and he's going to help us learn about ways you can train your puppy at home. So good morning, Tristan. Good morning, Paul. Welcome How are you? Welcome back to the show, Yeah, sir. thanks a lot. Yeah, who'd you bring with you here today? So you have Tassino. Tassino. Yep, and I have Tatiana, and they are four-month-old Bernese Mountain Dogs, wow. and their owners are Terry and Dennis Collins. And they come from a very special place. They come from Myra Mountain Kennels, okay. who is a breeder out in Mount Uniac, and she sends all of her puppies to me for puppy training. So she requires, as part of adopting her dogs, yep. that they come and do puppy training with me. So that's a super responsible thing for breeders to be doing to make sure that the owners of new puppies are getting the support they need in training and raising mm -hmm. their dog. Uh, first point before we start, Bernese or Burmese mountain dog? Bernese. Bernese, Bernese mountain dogs. Mountain yep. Dog. Okay. Perfect. Where do you want to start here? So I thought what we would talk about is, well, how do we start training our puppies to listen to us? Everybody wants our dogs to listen to us. Sure. But the problem is, is that dogs are not verbal creatures. So if we start giving them cues in English, like sit or come or down, things that we know, the dogs don't really understand that. So I thought I would explain, how do we actually teach a dog to understand a word? Okay. So I thought I'd put you to work right. and get you to help teach her to sit. So we've got your treat pouch. So very important when we're training a puppy is yes. that we have reward, something the dog wants to work for. So the very first step in teaching a dog to sit is we want to make the behavior happen. So we don't just say a word that a dog doesn't understand. We want to get the behavior happening. So the easiest way to teach a dog to sit is you can simply take a treat. You can put it to their nose. Hey, Tassino, get back here. <laughs> and then put it over their head like this. And as soon as hey, they Ticino, sit, reward. No. So grab a treat okay. and see if you can get her to do that just like I did. So you can put it right to her nose. And then just pull it forward so she gets up. Just put it down. Yeah, and then put it over her head. And then give it to her. Perfect. Good girl. So that's how we get the dog doing the behavior. So now we've got them sitting. So we want to do that a few times, make them sit. And then the next step in the procedure, if you want to teach the dog, is now we want to get food out of our hands. Because using food and training is great, but we don't want the dog to only listen if we have food. So once we've done this a few times, the next step is we can actually do it with an empty hand. So I'm just going to encourage her. Then I put my empty hand up, and she sits, and she's rewarded. So now she's learning that when I put my hand over her head like this, okay. if she sits, she's going to get a reward. My turn? Yep, go ahead. Come on, Cena. Good. <laughs> and then reward. Very nice. Good girl. So now that we've got that, they're understanding that a little bit, now we can start to add the word we want to use. And it doesn't have to be sit. It could be blueberry. It could be global. It could be whatever you want because dogs don't speak English. Right. So we're going to use sit because that's the word we commonly use. Yeah. So you can back up with the dog, and I'm going to say, Tosino, sit. And then she sits, and I reward her. Now, these dogs know this command a little bit because they're almost graduated from puppy one. Okay. If your dog has never heard that word before, what you would do is you would say the word and then very quickly show them the signal they already know, like this. Because, you know, sit. And then I show the signal they know, and I reward. And once I do that a few times, I don't have to do the signal anymore, and the dog will actually understand the word. And this will work if you're teaching down, if you're teaching come, if you're teaching anything you want. So it's very important that the dog be exhibiting the behavior first, and you link the word to a behavior they're already doing. So when you get a new puppy, don't start just giving them commands like sit and come. Right. Figure out how can I make the dog do that behavior. And a lot of times, the best way to do it is with luring. So luring is when we take the treat and we use it to make the dog Dog move. So if I want to teach Tosino to stand up, for example, I can do the same thing. I can lure it forward. When she gets up, I reward her. And then in the future, if I wanted her to stand up, I could simply say stand and then lure it forward and give her the treat. Okay. And then after a while, she's going to associate that word. So I'll do the same thing and come this way, Tosino. Not you, Tatiana. Sit. Sit. Oh, yeah. Good girl. Look at that. You're a superstar. So you say these Bernie's Mountain Dogs are four months old. At what age should they come to you to start training, Tristan? Right away. So eight weeks is when you really, can start eh? a puppy class. That's right. So a lot of people are concerned with vaccinations um, and keeping their puppy protected. But you can certainly take them to controlled, clean areas. I wouldn't want to take them to a dog park. But you want to get them socialized right away. It's bad advice to keep your puppy away from things. You want to expose them so they're socialized. Mm -hmm. So we want dogs who can come to a TV studio, for example, and be very, very comfortable like these girls are doing. So they're about ready to graduate from puppy one, and then they'll be moving into the puppy two program which focuses more on obedience with puppy one our big concern is ensuring that the dogs are social they're comfortable and they learn their basic manners like sitting and waiting for oh. things which still got to work on a little bit fantastic at what 
point do you end the puppy stage of a dog? When is it over? Well, once you get out into about six months, you get into the adolescent phase. And that's right. when dogs can become very challenging. And unfortunately, that's when dogs usually get surrendered to shelters because they're not as cute anymore. Ah, right. And they're a little bouncy and they're out of control and people get frustrated. So it's very important you do early puppy training. And when you get into the adolescent phase, you do even more training. So doing a puppy class is great, but that's not where your training ends. So your dog is learning all the time. The thing to remember is that you wouldn't just carry that treat pouch one hour a week and do training with your dog. I want my students to carry it all the time and be rewarding good behavior. So every time you're out for a walk with your dog, you could take that treat pouch with you. If he's walking beside you, you can reward. If he sits at the curb with you, you can reward. If he sees another dog and he doesn't bark at them, you can reward. Um, I know you mentioned your guy likes to bark at cars sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. So as soon as he sees a car, you can be ready with your treat pouch and reward him. So the key is to reward good behavior. So I'm trying to do a good job right now of making sure if these girls are sitting and behaving, that we're trying to reward them. We don't want to wait for them to jump on us. And so if you have a puppy jumping on you, really the best thing to do is to try to ignore them and lure them back into a position that you want. So I'm trying to make sure that they don't jump up on me and they're rewarded for sitting. And if we reward them for sitting enough, the jumping behavior will take care of itself and it will stop. Well, this has probably been the uh, most adorable and cutest <laughs> edition of Dog Talk here on the Morning News. My thanks to Tassino and Tatiana, the Bernese Mountain Dog Puppies, and also uh, Tristan Flynn of Jolly Tales. Always Thank you, pleasure, Paul. sir. For Thanks more information, people want to get in contact. JollyTales.ca, and of course, I'll be on News 95.7 at 3 o'clock today on the Sheldon McLeod Show. There you go. News 95.7 this afternoon with uh, Tristan Flynn, and also back here in a couple weeks' time with more dog talk on the Yeah, we'll see who we bring then. JollyTales.ca is the website.